Okay, onward in Perak 24, and we got another couplet of Psukim. And this is, I think, a little bit difficult to translate, maybe? I don't know. Gever chacham ba'oz uv'ish da'as ma'amitz koach ki betachbulos ta'as elacham yolchama u'tushua barov yo'it. And then in the case it's not clear to anyone, the reason why I'm putting these together is because of the key. I think you have to put them together. Yeah, all right. Who wants to tackle it? A man who's smart. Gever. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Giver is man. Yeah, yeah. Why? Sorry. Yeah, Giver. Okay, well, all right. So I guess this is one of the ambiguities here, right? Why is uh, man with strength? Yeah, like the question is how do you capture... Or is it a man who is wise in his strength? So that's why I'm not even sure because Giver might be the description of the man, but also it might be a... a like, a Chacham is Giver in O's. You know? I don't know exactly how to, what to do with it. So what, what, what are you saying here? A man is... A man who is wise in his strength, or it could be a. Well, we got to we got to capture Gever somehow, right? Uh, meaning might, like yeah, it means man, but like you, you, you can't just it doesn't say autumn ish, you know. Uh -huh. Can I say a mighty man? A mighty man, yeah, that's good. Mighty is good, right? So uh, a mighty man. Let's let's try that. A mighty man. Um, Wise. Or a wise man. Wise. Is in his let's, let's try that. A wise man is mighty in his strength. Okay, I, I have no idea if this is true. The ish daas ma'amitz koach. And the man of knowledge will. Ma'amitz here is a mechazik. Will strengthen power. Yeah, right. Very strange. Okay, the man of knowledge will strengthen power. Um, and I'll also point out. I think I said this after Shir one one day. Uh, earlier, which is that it is very strange in Hebrew how you have uh, chachma is a chacham, someone who has chachma is a chacham, someone who has tabuna is a navon. There's no one word for someone who has das. You just have to call them ish das. You know, I always thought that's a little weird. There's no such thing as a datan, you know. Um, uh, and even a yodea is not really like, you know, that's like a yodea thing. All right. Ki betach bulos tas elacham milchama v'tushua barov yoetz. For stratagems will make for you a nerd. For stratagems uh, will, uh, what is it? Stratagems. Um, for uh, betach bulos. Uh, for with stratagems. With stratagems, yeah. Uh, war will make you, or will make uh, you, you, will, you will make for yourself. war for yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. Utashua Brovio eats. And salvation is the abundance of an advisor. And salvation, I think we have to add in the word is uh, or will be uh, in an abundance of advisors. Yeah, that's funny because it's going to be plural, right? Um, even though it doesn't say it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Oh, sorry. And then Mitsustian says, Rove is Yana Gedula Vachashibus. So not abundance. At least way is not abundance in great, great advice, right? In great advice. Okay. But it's not advice, it's advice. Oh, sorry, uh, advi advisor, advisor, in a great advisor. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure other people will say rove means like a multitude. All right, so it's Matsustian. Okay, Sadigon says, ha giver ha chacham lo haos. So the, let's put this down here. So the, the wise, and mighty man, I guess, and mighty man, uh, mighty man, he has the strength, the power. Ubal hadas me me hakoach, I think, and one who possesses knowledge me hakoach is from strength in power or courage in power. Say again. I was thinking that also, but strong. I was thinking that also, but then something tickles my grammar senses about umats. Was is was strengthened in power? Is strengthened? Strengthened? All right, we'll try that. Strengthened in power. You're taking that also as this is he's the one being acted upon, not he's the one doing acting. Like Mehmet to do to actively. Right. So he is the subject of it, or he is the object of it. He is Mehmet's book of Mehmet's book of. Okay. Not saying it. is he is doing something to call. Right. That would be Mehmet. That's okay. the that would be the, the way that the uh, Masuas took it. Okay. Then Da. So it's weird because he, he he makes this into a separate sentence. Da. No. Ki milchama tazalacha rak batach You can only make wage war. Wage war 
with stratagems. Use your stratagems as a um the Hatishua, the Rebuy So he does take a reboy. And salvation is in, and he also takes a, a counsel, not counselor, in an abundance of counsel. Okay. And I think Targum is just a straight translation, if I remember correctly. Tav Gvar Hakima Min Ashina. Okay, so better. Oh, so actually this is Tav Gvar Hakima Min Ashina. Okay, so that's actually different. A a wise man is uh sorry, Tav. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wise man is better than a strong man. The gavria diadiasa min hu desares bechele, and a man of knowledge is better than one who is uh, desares bechele. Is uh, is I, I would say emboldened. I don't know if that's really true. Emboldened. Girded. Girded. Yeah, desares in Aramaic. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Mind if I check that? No, please. Is there what, what's the uh, the case that you're thinking of? I don't know. It's not, it's not English. Okay. There it is. I mean, even if it does mean that, then uh, then I think it still works out for um, emboldened because you know, girding your loins. Zari is to be quick, hurry. To quicken or strengthen, to tie or gird, to harness and strengthen oneself. Yeah, so I, I think figuratively it's, it's girded, right? Is uh, is let's say readied, right? Because like girding your loins, right? Uh, and moments is readied with um, strength, right? I think chayil is a uh, strength. Metul b'mad baranusa because with strated stratagems ta'abid lah krava you will wage war uh ufurkana basuga de milkana and um and salvation is with suga is abundant i think like sagi is with abundant uh advice yeah milkana is like um mom uh use that like to change your mind right yeah okay all right, now we got our, our English here. This is a tough, tough translation one. Arthur, the wise man remains steadfast. How are they getting that? Gever chacham ba'oz. How does that remain steadfast? I guess they're saying oz means steadfast. I guess oz in the sense of like a um, uh, strength in the, not in the like muscle sense, but in the like for, fortress sense. Yeah. I guess it's still uh, weird though. What, and what is it with gever? They're just translating as man. Oh, yeah. From Rashi, I think. Yeah. Remains. Uh, Rashi, I'm just going to... Just Tamid, he says. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Giver Chacham Tamid Ba'oz. Yeah, interesting. What is the little... Uh... Okay, those are just... Can we think of a different person we do, which is... Um... Migdalos? Um, no, it was... Um... Shem Hashem? Um, Hon Asher Kiryas Uzo. Uzo, yeah, right. Yeah, and there are... And maybe the translation strength is, like, not, like... Like physical strength, right. you know, but like yeah, like we use the term fortitude for both strength and like steadfastness, yeah. right? Okay, and the man of knowledge grows stronger. The ish das me'amets kach. So they're saying he like gathers or like he strengthens, becomes stronger in strength, right? He becomes stronger. All right. Uh, for through wise strategies, you can wage war for your benefit. So that's how they're saying lacha. Right, is for your benefit and salvation is in abundant counsel. Okay, we're going to save this because it's so different here. Living Knox says a wise man is strong while a man of knowledge gathers strength. Okay, so they're 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 saying uh, the vav is like a contrast for with spell it again stratagems you will you wage war and salvation comes with much counsel. Alter okay, so altar goes on a whole altar binge here. He says a wise man is mightier than a strong one. And a man of knowledge than one of great power. So that's kind of like Sadiyan, right? For through designs, you should make war and victory comes from abundant castle. Okay, ready, ready for altar. The Masoretic text reads, Geber Chacham Ba'oz, the wise man in the strength, and Amit Koach summons up power. The second phrase is intelligible through a poor parallelism. The first phrase is not intelligible. The translation follows the Septuagint, the Syriac, and the Targum, all of which seem to have read Gaver Chacham Me'az me and me Amit Koach. Readings that yield the translations offered here, right? So very always very quick to dismiss the uh, the Masoretic text, you know. Which look, I understand you're all, you're entitled to different texts, but to just declare that something is unintelligible, 
well, what about all the people who thought it was intelligible, <laughs> you know? And this is a book of like a, a cryptic uh, statement. So, you know, give, uh, you know, give them some slack. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep up all these translations here just because I have no idea what, what to make of this, but I'm going to move these uh, down here. I see no one trans 808 says that advisor though, it seems. Uh, correct. Counsel. Yeah, right, right. Council, that's true. That's a good point. All right. So we can, we can change ours there. Um, let's move this here. And then... Uh, is in great or abundant advice. I say distinguished because uh, he said Loshim Gedula is in distinct, uh, distinguished, yeah, uh, or great uh, abundant advice. Yeah, Ariel, don't get into a car accident. No, I'm I'm on a train. Um, oh, okay, don't get into a train accident. But, <laughs> yeah. Are we ready for questions? Yes, we are. Okay, so um, is this referring to like a literal war or like even like 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 when you're gonna approach someone in like a debate or like in you know in uh, everyday life? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and phrase this in accordance with our methodology, which is granted this is referring to a literal war, but um, how far can this be extended? right, to any conflict. And then it has to be true for a literal war, I think. Yeah, Yaakov? What is the Geber Chacham? What is Bella's name? Yeah, I think we have to actually ask this in a much more general way than we usually do, which is like, we're gonna put a translation question here. How do you even translate uh, Geber, Geber Chacham Ba'oz? And what does it mean? I just, it feels like, what are the three translations again? The wise man remains steadfast. A wise man is strong. A wise man is mightier than a strong one. But, you know, it's just so, I think we have to like put this as a question just because it's so ambiguous. And then Sadigon also said, yeah, Kershan? Yeah. What is the difference between the Gever and the Ishda? Yeah. Is there a difference even at all? Yeah. Are they referring to the same person? Um, and how many players do we have? Yeah, okay, yeah. I was I was actually gonna list that question first, right? So so how many many players do we have? Um so we definitely have the Chacham and the Ishdas, right? Yeah. And then the question is, is Oz another person? And is Gever Chacham the type of person? Like, you know, so yeah. And then what's the, the relationship yeah, what between the two is the relation between all the different between players? The players. Yeah. yeah. So the question is first question. Is it one person, two people, or four people? Is that can it be four people? I mean like mom, it's co no, yeah, okay. Strong people. Chacham versus Ovos. Um and Ishdas versus Mahomet slave. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go. Is player a jargon? We're here as close like subjects or oh no I, I think I don't know I also thought player um okay. yeah Actors, yeah sure. yeah yeah no it's not a jargon thing uh we can make it one yeah Ariel <laughs> he's a Michelin player yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um what's what's the difference in at least in this context uh you know like a wise man is mighty in the strength but the man of knowledge will strength and power. Mm -hmm. With strat with uh, for with strategies you will make work for yourself. Like what, what is that like? What's the contrast? Can I do? Oh, the two psukim. Yeah, like what's okay, the yeah. uh the, yeah. what's the relationship between the two psukim, right? Because yeah, that's that is another thing. Also, is like you know, war and salvation don't seem to depend on like the personal strength that the first person seems to be talking about, like personal strength almost. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah, Yaakov? Uh, I guess elaborating on four, like, is, is it the Gever Chacham was Tachbulos and the Ishtahas was Yoids or Rob Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to actually put that into question three, which is, um, which is like, what role do they play in light of the second Pasuk? Yeah, Sean? Yeah, is the making war for yourself a positive thing, a negative thing? And then how does that change its relationship to the second path? 
Okay. Um, yeah, let's add this to here. I mean, yeah, is, are the, the two halves in the second posit contrasting each other? Uh -huh. Or is it saying that you're going to make more for yourself? Oh, yeah, see, and yeah. yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll put that as a new question. Are... Right. So is, um, uh, are the two halves in the second posit, um, uh like opposites or are they uh complementary slash like um uh whatever complementary yeah <laughs> yeah Arya? yeah i mean like in, in any war like you think you you need you know strategies and strength so like like what is it really coming to add in like the second half of the puzzle like like yeah duh you need it strategy like wh why would you think okay, yeah, so what's the more right right yeah. yeah what is the hava amina amina and i'm gonna say especially in the second half because it is in the first half also in the second half uh yeah yaakov i don't know sean's question in number two yeah does tasachal machama mean that you um win a war or be successful in a war or that you start a war okay does taase lacha milchama mean that you win a war or just start a war or something else. Yeah, Isaac. Um, is the muscle of to the well, is the um, the muscle of the poor who saved the town? Is that um, in Kahalas? Uh, yeah, but the Meiri is totally fine, assuming that that Mishle is referring to that also. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the, yeah. Um, um, what are Kahalas? Yeah, yeah, and just to point out here, in um. We the last puzzle that we had, took that we had at uh Da'as and Chachma and Bina, and now we have Tachbulos, which is Yishma Chacham Yosef. Oh, sorry, Lasis Lan uh Arma Lenar Das Muzima. So we have Das again, and Yishma Chacham Yosef Lekach Navon Tachbulos Yetne. So Tachbulos is associated with a Navon, so that might also be relevant to the last one. So, um, what are what are Tachbulos, and I guess we should also ask. Um and oops and uh, uh again and what's the other thing uh yo eights right eights yeah mm -hmm. uh and eights uh just one second eights yeah Sean who's giving the advice yeah who is giving this eights uh a yo eights mm -hmm. yeah no yeah <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. multiple people or is it just one person okay yeah and what let's just say uh what how does um how does rove qualify it right so if rove is qualitative then what makes it great advice or like distinguished advice and then if it's a multitude then then what, what does that uh, add yeah sir. what's the practical difference between someone who's giver but owes and someone who's not it's go Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the difference between Gever Ba'oz and Ma'amit's Kwa? Yeah, that, that's also why I am more inclined uh, to read Gever as a verb than an adjective. Yeah, Gever Chacham Ba'oz. Word. Gever Chacham. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I also don't even know enough to know if that makes a difference, <laughs> but it's good, good to notice it though. Gever Chacham Ba'oz, Ish Das. Yeah. No clue, no clue. Yeah, uh, yeah, Isaac. Um, does the schools have a positive connotation? Uh, usually it does. Okay. Yeah, we had this actually on Monday night, last Monday. I just want to see the context there. Machshavos <laughs> tzadikim uh, mishpat. Oh no, there it has negative. Yeah, yeah. So we pointed out that it has uh, that that it could be used neutrally, like mizima okay. also. Yeah, takbulus rishayim mirma. Yeah. Um, it, let's put this way. It has a connotation of superior thinking, but whether that superior thinking is harnessed for good or for bad okay. is uh, a little, uh, yeah, different, yeah. Uh, what's the interplay between chokhmah type of things, or just like wisdom and uh, strength? Yeah. Um, I mean, whether yeah. I want to take it as there's some way to complementing each other or other translations to have them as like being opposed to one another, she would have thought one thing. Yeah. Now. Okay, I'm going to also ask that in a general way, uh, which is, um, which is, uh, what do we make of the, I was like, we never get to the second page and that's because I'm, I'm keeping all the translations out there. <laughs> what do we make of the, um, the, the, the juxtaposition of like um, Chachma phenomena and strength 
war phenomena. Uh, Yariel? Uh, yeah, I was. It might be related to that question actually, but, but um, you know, the a wise man in, is mighty in his strength. Is he referring to? Is he saying that uh, you know, that your strength comes from your fafa or or the opposite? Yeah. Um. So, what is the relationship between the chachma and the gvura? Uh, the the o's. And then I'm going to put the parentheses and the gvura because we don't even we don't even know if uh, gever is being used like as a reference to gvura or if that's just another word for man. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. What is the war? What is the war? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll start. I'll, I'll, I'll add lead this with what is the milchama. Yeah. Okay. I think we got our work cut out for us. Unless Ariel, do you have another question, or is that left over from? Before. No, it's left over. Okay. okay. All right. So with the puzzle that's this confusing, like, I mean, this is true in general, but I feel like you just have to dive into whatever your mind starts to associate to. You know, yeah, yeah. Go. Just go to the translations for a second. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll, if I remember, I'll print this out for tomorrow uh, just so we can have them to consult. Yeah. A wise man is better than a strong man, and a man of knowledge is better than one who's ready with strength. Um, I'll say girded now, now that I see it in the context, girded with strength. Um, because with stratagems, oh, hold on a second, I, I might have a diagram. Yeah, I do. So if no one has seen the actual process of, of girding, oops, oh, I hate Bing, hold on. <laughs> it's, this is not even Bing, this is not even Bing's fault, uh, but I still hate Bing. I'm gonna blame Bing. Um, I, I, I have tried setting my defaults before, but uh, 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 it either it doesn't oops, stick or, okay, how to go to your loins. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, hold on a second here. So, uh, yeah, the tunic won't allow you to do heavy labor or fighting battle, and assessing the girding one's loins. First, hoist the tunic up so that all the fabric is above your knees. This will give you mobility. Gather all the extra material in front of you so that the back of your tunic is snug against your backside. Uh, once the excess fabric is gathered in front, pull it underneath and between your legs and your rear. This feels much like a diaper. <laughs> Gather the half of the material in each hand, bring it back to the front, and then you go to war. Finally, the two handfuls of material together, and you're all set for both battle and some hard labor. Go forth, be ye men, and gird up your loins. <laughs> yeah, so so that's the phenomenon. That's why girding your loins is like synonymous with preparing yourself, especially for, for battle. Yeah. Um, in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna read through these again. Because with stratagems, you will wage war and salvation is with abundant advice. Our school, the wise man remains steadfast. I'm least inclined to that one. I think just because uh, um, of owes to me, power means is the better translation. And like, I feel like this doesn't respect the word giver as much. Uh, the man of knowledge grows stronger. Mamet Koach, I think uh, growing stronger is, uh, um, is that in his, one of those mirrors? Um. Ma'amit Koach? Yeah, yeah. Is that Yonamata? Oh, hold on. I know from, um, there's one of those songs with like either Yom Kippur, like one of the, like, um, oh yeah. Like, uh, whatever they yeah. For through wise strategies, you can wage war for your benefit and salvation is an abundant counsel. And so they're trying to say waging war lacha is winning the war, right? You were asking that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a wise man is strong while a man of counsel gathers strength. For with stratagems you will wage you wage war and salvation comes with much counsel. So that's pretty much exactly Sadigon, except abundance. No, no, same. Yeah, that is Sadigon. I think. A wise man is strong. No, no, it's not Sadigon. Sadigon is comparative. So alter Sadigon. Wise man is mightier than a strong one and man of knowledge than one of great power. For through designs you should make war. That's another thing, you should make war. You shall make war, right? Uh and uh and victory comes from a bottom castle. Yeah, this is so confusing. Yeah, Isaac. Um, or different ideas. Uh, yeah, hold on. Just, yeah, you're right. I'm just gonna put the the obvious idea out of the table. Okay. Which is, uh, um, if you try to you know wage war with just might. Yeah. Rather than chakma. Yeah. You're gonna fail. Whereas if you wage it through chakma, you're gonna succeed. Right. Okay. So I actually want to read. Uh, I usually don't look at this until day two, um, but I looked at this in order to make sure that Tadigon took them together. Uh, and then I saw Sadigon's shot. What are we on? 185? Um, no, oh, 184. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I looked at it yesterday. So <laughs> um, so he says, Salik Bazet 
Taus Misha Medamish Hamilchama Bakoach Aguf Vat Musa. So this is coming to uh, remove the error of the person who imagines that war is with bodily power and strength. Amar Lo, I'm saying no. Elahi Betfuno Vatakulos Kvisha Kavar Bearno, saying that it's through these things, right? Mine Mishu who gever Bachachma, Hare Lohaos, someone who is a gever in Chachma, he will have the O's. Umishu Baldas, Hare Hu Ma'amits. So this reminded me of what you were saying by last week's Pesukim of that keep the chachma yibani bias ubetuni is konan, right? That like um, that it's obvious to everyone that you need to build a house with chachma that you can't do it through just like muscling it out, you know. But it's not so obvious here that um, you know there are people who think that like they can just win war through power alone, or you know that, that, that like they they downplay the role of strategy, you know. Um, and so uh, so I think on its most general level, then this is telling you that um, that uh, that you have to strength the strength you have is only as good as the strategies that you're employing, you know. I see. So it's um, so like the last one is it's not that telling you that this is important. It's telling you it's the important thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and the best example of this really is uh, uh, is David Amalek. I'm going to quote the only part of Shmuel that I know <laughs> that I started learning in my, my project to get through Saber Shmuel this summer where we only got to one pair. Um, but, um, uh, but I just want to read it because it, I think it, it, it explicitly uh, highlights these terms. Um, yeah, so it says... Uh, Right, so David is a kid at this time who is just a shepherd, um, and it says, and then Goliath is a big imposing guy. I just want to see where it uh, describes him. Yeah, a champion went forth from the Philistine camps whose name was Goliath of, of Gos. His height, six cubits in one span. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, his, uh, he had a copper helmet on his head, and he was wearing an armor of mail. The weight of the armor was 5,000 copper shekels. He had a copper shield on his legs and a copper neck guard between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the blade of his spear weighed 600 iron shekels. The shield bearer walked before him. He called and stood out to the battalions of Israel and said to them, Why are you going forth to wage war? Am I not the Philistine while you are the servants of Saul? Choose for yourself a man and let him come down to me. Okay, so he taunts them. Okay, he, uh, he proves to be a, a mighty enemy, blah, blah, blah. So then David goes and he said, I'm skipping ahead. Uh, David spoke to the men standing with him saying, what should be done for the man who slays this Philistine and removes the disgrace from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he disgraces the battalions of the living God? So the people told him regarding this matter saying, such and such shall be done for the man who kills him. Okay, fine. So then going forward, he says, uh, oh, I think, okay, this is, yeah, this is gonna be good. So he says, uh, yeah, so David said, Hashem will rescue me from the hand of the lion and the hand of the bear. He will rescue me from this Philistine. Um, so Saul said to David, go and may Hashem be with you. Saul dressed David in his own battle garments. He put a copper helmet on his head and dressed him in armor. David then girded his sword over his battle garments, but he was unwilling to go forth that way for he was not accustomed to it. So David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I am not accustomed to them. And David removed them from on himself. He took his staff in his hand and picked out five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag in the knapsack and his slingshot was in his hand. Then he approached the Philistine. The Philistine walked going closer and closer to David and the man bearing his shield was before him. The Philistine peered and saw David and he derided him for he was a youth, ruddy and handsome. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come after me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Then the Philistine said to David, come to me so that I may offer your flesh to the fowl of the heavens and to the beasts of the earth. I so want to quote taunt someone with that statement sometime. <laughs> um, David said to the Philistine, you come, to, you come, like, here's the part that I think is explicitly uh, referenced. You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you with the name of Hashem, master of legions, the God of the battalions of Israel that you have ridiculed. On this day, Hashem will deliver you into my hand. I shall smite you and I will remove your head from upon you and I shall offer the carcass of the Philistine camps to this day to the fowl of the heavens and to the beast of the earth. Then the whole earth will know that there is a God in Israel and all this assembly will know that not through sword and spear does Hashem grant salvation for unto Hashem is the battle and he shall deliver you to his hands. Big difference between David and Shlomo that David ex always expresses in terms of God will wage war, God will have salvation. Shlomo is telling you what that means, which is Chachma, you know. Um, it happened that when the Philistine arose and moved closer to David, that David hurried and ran to the line towards the Philistine. David stretched his hand to the sack. He took a stone from there and slung it and struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone per penetrated his forehead and he fell down upon his face on the ground. Thus David overpowered the Philistine with a, slight, a slingshot and a stone. He smote the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in David's hand. Um, David ran and stood by the Philistine, took Goliath's sword and drew it from its sheath, having already killed him, and he cut off his head with it. Um, 
Yeah, et cetera. Yeah. So that, I think that's like the, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a much longer story than that, but that, I think that's like the illustration there of like, everyone was intimidated by this guy who was a warrior and he was just strong. And he also led the battles with that image of his strength, you know, and David like saw that, okay, fine, here's a weak spot, you know, and like, I can like, you know, disarm him by like not being, you know, by, by making him overconfident, et cetera. I mean, you got to analyze a little story, but yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's, that is a good like general basic idea here. Um, and I think just to add to that, this is what I'm going to call the, uh, the sheer, this is defining Mishlech machismo, right? So like being a strong man in Mishle does not mean physical strength. It means that you use strategies, you know, and that ultimately that's going to be the thing that, that determines your, it's right. Meaning in other words, it might be even reframing what Gvura is, by by calling him a you know the chacham is is gever ba o is not gever the the goof yeah. So I was actually about to say that because like the next line is ish das ma amet koach like right. he really strengthens the like koach yeah like, he makes the chacham even like more yeah like um like gives gives him more arsenal almost uh -huh. like more das gives the chacham more or gives the uh like just the whole the strategy right like, um, yeah yeah okay that's good that's good yeah Ariel. Yeah, I was actually gonna. So I was actually gonna uh, use David as a, as an analogy oh, nice. to this. Yeah, I, and I think there is another case you could bring. It's with Yeshua when he uh, when he I think took over um, uh, a, a city where with you literally using pure strategy. Right. Um, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember what it was, but uh, which yeah, city it was? Maybe it was. That, yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, Rabbi Moskowitz holds that. Um, that Saber Yoshua is really here to like train you in case after case of this, you know, in terms of, uh, there's one, uh, couple, actually a couple of years where Rabbi Moskowitz went through all the battles in Yoshua and he defined what the strategies were in war terms and then applied, figure out what you could extrapolate from those strategies and apply it to like waging war in terms of, uh, like other areas in terms of like Mishleakli, you know. I'd love to hear the uh, yeah, yeah. I, I hope they were recorded. Yeah. The sun stops and stops. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And exactly. I would also like to add maybe like uh just another way of looking at the Pusik is, you know, um in the in the first half of the Pusik where it says I was man is mighty in the strength, I think maybe strength can be there in his, you know, and with you know strength in his relationship with Akash Barco, like he should have strength in that, that should be a security. Mm -hmm. um and the second half is a man of knowledge will strengthen power you know at the same time like that doesn't necessarily mean he should completely ignore his you know uh you know strength I meaning he does right. have physical strength that he needs to utilize yeah you know, so he but, but but at the end of the day he needs to use his plasma too right and you know and that that's just that's the strategies yeah yeah that's why i for i misheard ezra first that's why i asked you to repeat yourself is i thought that um that mamet's koach could also mean you have koach, but the thing that gives you a koach strength is your chachma, like how you harness your uh, your chachma, your, your koach, yeah. Yeah, new approach? Uh, new approach, yeah. Yeah, so reading kind of like the target of this, yeah. right? So really contrasting what a what the difference between a wise man is yeah, right, and a man of knowledge. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you scroll down to the actual puzzle. So um, the wise man in the... Let's go down a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. The wise man, um, I'm going to say in the second pasuk, is the person who engages in strategies. Yeah. Right. So that's a person who is able to have complex thinking to think ahead. Yeah. Right. Whereas, like, the strong person just goes in and he's like, I'll figure it out while I'm there. Like, I'm just going to fight my way through. Yeah. Right. So there's no design, there's no plan in action mm -hmm. for that person. And plans are really good. And there's also a point where you can get so caught up in your own plan that you just see the moves that you're making and mm -hmm. you can't see and uh -huh. respond to the other things that are around you yeah. and hear other people's input on your right. advice, which is the second you know, part, which yeah. is the man of knowledge, right? He's the person who's listening to advice. Right? Yeah. So there's a kind of flexibility between being able to have your own ideas and your own strategies, and then also being able to hear other people's strategies yeah. and see that your perspective is a limited perspective. Yeah. And that's a further level of wisdom yeah. that that person has okay. that is necessary. And you need both. You need the ability to think for yourself yeah. and the ability to recognize that you need to also be able to listen to others in yeah. order to 
have both parts of the war in order to be successful okay. in it. So I, I also was thinking along similar lines, and I think I want to throw mine on the table and then just uh, compare and contrast until we see what uh, what emerges. So I think because our last recipient were so uh, jargon oriented in terms of like it ended up being on Friday that that the main idea that we came up with was the, that it was teaching you the differences between Chachma, Tfuna, and Das, and the role that they play in success, you know? And so given that, which I'll review in a little while, I wanted to see what happens if we treat Chacham here as Davka, someone who has Chachma, the way we defined it, Da'as as someone who has Das, the way we defined it, and then Tachbulos either is a new concept or it's banking on what we saw in the beginning of Mishle, where Tachbulos is really what the uh, the Navon is looking for, you know, um, with the, um, oh, whatever, oh, what I, I quoted before, uh, uh, the Navon Tachbulos Yikne, and then and then Eitzah, you know, and so I had a similar thought with Eitzah, that Eitzah has to do with, with the willingness to uh, acknowledge that your own perspective is limited, and get, and that you might be either it's limited both by your information and by your biases and by your way of thinking. I think it's like, like, you know, your, uh, yeah, on all three levels. Um, and so you need to constantly be open to other, not just be open to actively seek an abundance of counsel. And I think the abundance, I, I'm more inclined to do the abundance because, um, uh, because if you just said it's having like really good counsel, so then that's the guy who the classic was talking about, you know, like talk to a guy who's internalized this plus, you know, but but the question is, can we can we like um, can we apply the terms in a technical sense? So that's the thrust I want to do. And then just to reiterate the way that you're taking it is you're saying that it's you, the Gever Chacham Ba'os corresponds to the Tachbulos mm -hmm. and the Ishdas corresponds to the Robioids. Yeah. yeah, and on what you were saying. Yeah. So on Friday, right, you brought up the it was um, Bruce Lee in yeah. terms of learn the rules, master the rules, dissolve the rules. Yeah. Right. So a strategy is you know the rules of the game yeah right and you're able to then figure out and maneuver based on your mastery right. of the rules right advice is recognizing that yes these are the rules that war has been played by in the yeah. past yeah and people come up with new strategies all the time yeah and sometimes you get so caught up and you hear all these battles where they're playing it traditionally yeah and the per the opponent that they're playing it with knows that these are the rules of the game and yeah. they use that as a way of realizing okay now knowing that these are the rules that the person thinks we're playing on, yeah. I can change the rules right, yeah. and shift up the pacing of the battle yeah. and take the initiative and completely decimate right. the person that's in front of me. And right. So the person who's able to hear that, oh, maybe there is some new way of looking at things yeah. is the person who is able to dissolve them. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, this, this is the type of thing that I wanted to, to try to, to, to flesh out here. The, the one that sticks out in my mind as problematic, given the previous definitions, is DAS. Because right? we said that DAS is the highest level, which is intuition, which is, for lack of a better term, pure intuition, right? Bina requires intuition in terms of, of mavin davar, mitoch davar, but das is mavin davar, not mitoch davar, like when there is no davar to go with, which I can see being very, you know, uh, essential in war in terms of, of either outpacing the opponent um, by going into a realm where there is no map of like strategies or in terms of your creative responses to like, I'm sure no one thought of pulling a slingshot against Goliath until David and Melech did it, which, you know, to us, it seems obvious, like, you know, but like, it's, uh, you know, uh, clearly like if that was a thing, then if that was a, a known threat, Goliath would have like put a piece of armor on his forehead or something. I, you know, I don't know exactly what, what he would do. But, but what troubles me a little bit, because again, this is a minor problem, but it's, a, it's sticking in my intuition. Chachma, Tuna, Das. Here you have Chachma, Das, and Tuna, essentially. You know, and then Eitzah. Eitzah, I'm fine with having being a separate category because it's saying you have to go outside of yourself in all these areas. But uh, I'm, I'm slightly bothered by the order. Yeah, I definitely hear that. Yeah. And it could be that it's just saying, like, you start with Chacham. Yeah. Right? we're putting it into the learning the rules. So yeah. Chacham learns the rules yeah. and then it's kind of just jumping right. to that. Okay, so now that he knows the rules, so he's becoming a master of the rules. Yeah. And that's like, once you can do strategies, like you're really a master of the rules. Yeah. And then the person who can hear beyond the rules and hear yeah. that things might not be playing according to the rules. Um, that's the, right. the furthest. Yeah, I hear that. I, I think another, another easy out for this minor question is uh, that 
in the previous pesukim it went in order because the it was specifically to teach you the sequencing of it. But here it's since it's referring to all three qualities that that are in one person, then it's it's Davka scrambling them. You know, I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not so happy with these answers, but uh, yeah. Um, okay, so now the question is in terms of our two approaches. Uh, can we either develop them each into two different approaches or synthesize them into one? Um, I, mean, I just want to think about the, the structural way that you're reading it. Gever chacham ba'oz v'ish ta'as ma'amiz koach ki betach bulas ta'as elacham yolchama u'teshua b'rov yo eitz. And you were not taking a stance on the ish das specifically, or were you? Well, I was saying the ish das is the person who is um, listening oh. to a bunch of events. Oh, okay, He's right, able right. to okay, so hear the, things yeah. that don't fit into his yeah. mental framework yeah. or like the rules that he's playing by because he recognizes that there's other perspectives to learn. Right. So I, I am comfortable saying that that's what each das means and that's why he's using das. Not das of the type that you use to fill your, your rooms with all types of treasure, but das as in external uh, knowledge, you know, the way that we, that, that Rabini Yona defined Chachma before, you know, in fact, maybe we could just do this, hold on, because we know Chachma is used in a technical jargon sense, but it's also used as like the person who has perfections of knowledge, you know, like mm -hmm. a, a, as a whole. So maybe, maybe this Chacham is the one who's, who is like a, a, a master of all the types of Chachma from before Chacham being Andas, and this is just referring to him in this gen Yeah, I'm, I'm, let me back up then. I'm much more comfortable now saying that this is not using technical jargon, but it's relying on knowing the technical jargon from the previous Pesukim. And that way we're not beholden to like these specific things. And then Das fits into what you get from other people. You know, you're not getting, yeah, okay, that, that, I think that makes sense, yeah. I have a couple of thoughts about the row of Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, one is that it's the more obvious one, I guess, that um, you give multiple uh, different perspectives. Someone might have an ambition that no one else thinks of. Yeah. Which is more likely, more. Okay, that's good. Yeah, advice. yeah. But secondly, that even having an abundance of advice is not really going to help you if you don't select the piece of advice that's right. Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking of the case um, from Tanakh, also by David. Yeah. Where Shalom is chasing after David and Ahi his advice. And then David sends in his uh, his spy, Kushi, I think it's uh -huh. to give like um, really bad advice, but it sounds like good advice. Uh -huh. And then Sean went for that, uh, uh -huh. you know, advice that sounds good <laughs> uh -huh. and he ignored Achitofos. Yeah. And Achitofos, I guess, was, you know, the better, you always know, saw that that was going to uh -huh. ruin so he killed himself. Uh -huh. So it's not, you know, like having multiple pieces right. of advice is not going to help you if you don't choose the good Right. One. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And I think someone who's a Chacham Ishtas is, you know, is uniquely poised to select the good advice because he had, you know, because um, he's, he's someone who can, um, who can think through it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he might not have come up with the things himself, but he can, um, he can see what, what, um, what the effects of the different, like what would happen. Yeah. Um, you know, because like, he, um, he has that type of ability. Yeah, okay, good. So that, that is a good point that emerges from both of what you're saying is the uh, yeah. that the hearing of the advice is only a means to being able, you, you need to evaluate the advice and using your phone. I just want to add a little detail, yeah. but it's, also, it's, it's not just that he is going to pick the one that is the best. Yeah. It's, he might take elements from different things, like, yeah. you know, um, and say, Oh, you know, like this part of the strategy would good, and this part of the strategy would good, and then weave it together to mm -hmm. be something that's even, that's yeah. even better. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, sir. So when I think of Shua, I also think a little bit more of like the war has ended, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that's interesting. Like I if you're winning the war, yeah. then like what's the need for for salvation? Like once yeah. you once you win. So I think this like might also be kind of like if you're winning a war, like it takes more than just like I don't know Chachman Das in this case. To, to like put the brakes on and say like okay like enough's enough like we won like let's just like uh like end it and like be peaceful uh -huh. i think like a lot of times uh -huh. it's like eight up like good interesting right yeah yeah like uh the the defeating just because you defeat the enemy does not mean that like you're all in a good you're in a good situation that is uh, yeah yeah <laughs> right um okay let's uh let's stop here for today and then tomorrow we can go to the park and see uh, see what's what all right, good. Uh, this was a lot better than I thought, given that I was, I was a little uh, intimidated by the uh, initial translations. This is pretty good. Okay.